I'd like to call the City of Apache Junction Council meeting to order. The invocation will be led by Councilman Peter Heck and the Pledge of Allegiance by Councilman uh, Robert Schroeder. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege of being able to gather together this evening to discuss city issues. We ask that you give the council wisdom and clarity in its decision making. We thank you too for the safe and enjoyable July 4th events that were held yesterday. And we ask your peace now for the family of Gail Barney, the mayor of Queen Creek, following his sudden passing. Watch over them in their time of need and during these coming months. And Father, we ask your blessing and protection for the men and women in our military, as well as our dedicated law enforcement during these troubled times. We ask all these things in your holy name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. <coughs> Mayor Wilson? Here. Councilmember Evans? Here. Councilmember Heck? Here. Councilmember Johnson? Here. Councilmember Nesser? Present. Councilmember Schroeder? Here. You have a quorum, Your Honor. Okay. Well, if anyone on the con would like to move an item from consent agenda, please let me know. If not, do I have a motion for consent agenda? Your Honor, I move that the consent agenda be approved as written. Second. second. Moved and seconded. Roll call. Councilmember Schroeder? Yes. Councilmember Nesser? Yes. Councilmember Evans? Yes. Councilmember Heck? Yes. Councilmember Johnson? Yes. Mayor Wilson? Yes. Motion passes, Your Honor. Okay, wards and presentations. I have one here. Whoops, a present proclamation. I have to unbury it. There we are. <clears throat> Designating the, the month of July as Parks and Recreation Month. Whereas our parks, trails, and recreation program are vital and important to establish and maintaining the quality of our life, ensuring the health of all citizens, creating stronger, more vibrant, and resilient communities. And whereas parks, trails, and recreation program increase the community's economic prosperity, increase tourism, aid in the attraction and retention of businesses, and help reduce crime. And whereas parks, trails, and recreation programs are fundamental to environmental and social well-being of our community, and whereas the U.S. House of Representatives has designated July as Parks and Recreation Month, whereas Apache Junction recognizes the benefits derived from parks, trails, and recreation. Now, therefore, I, Chip Wilson, Mayor of City of Apache Ju Junction, do hereby proclaim July 2022 as Park and Recreation Month. Liz. I'll come down there. <laughs> Heard the cats. Short yeah. <laughs> Short people in the front. Hi, Jerry. Thank you, Mayor Wilson. Uh, Liz Lingenbach, Parks and Recreation Director, and um, I'm sure nobody wants to hear any more from me. And so we prepared a very short video that's gonna be kicking off this week, our Parks and Recreation Month. Um, the Parks and Rec staff and Matt McNulty have prepared a very short video uh, to share all the great things uh, that Parks and Rec brings to our community. So I'm gonna get that started for you. 
<clears throat> Every day, Parks and Recreation comes together to bring you quality programs, people, and places. All through the month of July, we will be celebrating our Parks and Recreation. This month, rise up and stand with your Parks and Recreation! Parks and Recreation has a long history of building and providing amenities to help aid in our community's health and fitness. The Multigen Center is built to provide a variety of health, social, and fitness programs with over 25 group fitness classes, cardio equipment, and indoor track, gymnasium, climbing wall. There is something for everybody. Parks and Recreation offers many outdoor parks and trails. Most notably, our Silly Mountain has a plethora of trails that will take you winding around the mountain, seeing the beauty that all of AJ has to offer. From toddlers to seniors, we strive to provide programs for all ages. For our senior citizens, we provide a hot meal throughout the week. We offer exercise and social programs, including line dancing and bingo. We have something for all. During the summer, fall, and spring break camps, we keep kids engaged with open gym programs and sport programs when they are out of school. We offer sport programming from parent-toddler classes all the way up to adult leagues, including softball, golf, and basketball. Known for our outstanding community events, we offer something every month, sometimes every weekend of the month. Our community comes together with strong partnerships and we produce one-of-a-kind events such as Last Dutchman Days, Last Dutchman Marathon, Festival of the Superstitions, Blues and Brews, and Fourth of July. There are nine community parks, including our newest, which went to the dogs, Dutchman Dog Park. We continue to work on park improvements and will be concentrating on Superstition Shadows Park and renovations to Silly Mountain. But it takes a lot of important people to rise up to deliver parks and recreation essentials. The recreation team is made up of those working maybe their first job to those that have made a career out of recreation. The park team cares for parks and facilities working long hot hours to make sure the pool is operating and your parks are well maintained. They are often the first crew that is out in the morning and sometimes the last one leaving at the end of the evening. Our rangers patrol our facilities to educate and enforce rules to make sure that you are safe while using our facility. We have a team of admin professionals who are really behind the scenes and often seen. Parks and Recreation is the start of many shared experiences and memories. Celebrate us this month and share your stories using the hashtag RiseUpJuly. Join us this month as we stand up, rise up, and celebrate your Parks and Recreation! Can you play? Yes! <laughs>
express my heartfelt thanks and appreciation for yesterday's event. I had the opportunity to be a part of that, uh, and it was a marvelous event. I was going to say, I bet Al's already going to cover this, but I'll jump ahead a little bit and you can fill in the blanks. But I was very, very impressed with how well organized and planned that it was and realizing it was a new venue, so it was not a it was something they had to kind of work around, but it went exceedingly well. There were many people there, thousands there, um, and I was impressed with how, how well it went and how much folks enjoyed it. I also wanted to take an opportunity to express my appreciation to Chief Pooley for the significant police presence. Uh, that meant a lot to a lot of people. Uh, in addition to that, we had there were the uh, police explorers, uh, the park rangers, uh, the AJ Mounted Rangers, and the Arizona Rangers. So there were a lot of organizations contributing to that. And I had a number of people come up to me and tell me how pleased they were because they felt safe they, and they had a chance to have fun. And I am grateful to everyone, again, to the Parks and Rec. You folks are wonderful. And I am grateful that we have that kind of dedicated people to make an event like that so successful. So, thank you. Did I steal all your thunder there, Al? No, okay. <laughs> nope. City Manager's report. Thank you, Your Honor. Good, good evening. And I'm just so excited to be able to talk a little bit about two key components of a city related to public safety and economic development. And two of those items are on the agenda tonight, which are um, provision and the expenditure of tax dollars for street and roads. Shane's going to give you the update on that. We ex expend a significant amount of the city's budget each year on street and roads. And I always say to get goods and services where they need to be, people where they need to be, it's, it's a, you need a good, safe road and good, good and safe environment there. The other thing about park, the other, the other item tonight is Parks and Rec. In the Parks and Recreation Department, we have had a long-standing tradition in this city since we've become a city that is much better to recreate than to incarcerate. In your investment over many, many years, you saw some of the outcomes of some of those investments. We have a park ranger program that's, they don't brag about it enough, I get to do that. But other cities and towns come here to learn from Kelly Martin how to do it, how to do it right, and how to work with the Public Safety Department. If you ask Chief Pooley, he'll say, that we work as a unit in public safety with park rangers. They can cover and take care of a lot of things that are, uh, that are, that are happening in the city. In addition, it was great to see our life. We had a lifeguard here. It was a second year lifeguard here. We have our um, um, Dave from the facilities. The facilities themselves need to be maintained and re-upped. And, and one of the things that's going to happen, they mentioned, is Superstition Shadows Park. It's time to put some investment in that area. So. We're just super excited and super thrilled to have such a world-class investment in our parks and recreation. It's so important that a community it knits itself together uh, with its streets departments, with its, um, with its public safety department as well, it's its parks and rec. Tonight I want to share also some news within the department directors for the community. You all are aware that two of our longer standing department directors are going to be retiring. It's uh, with some mixed emotions, I'm super happy for them, but I am going to miss them both. Uh, Janine Solly and Economic Development will be here till September. Um, she's been with the city over 21 years. Um, Jean, and when you think about um, a city manager's role and its connection to economic development, it's a close relationship. And Janine and I have worked on so many different projects and coordinating in efforts of, of retaining our current businesses and making sure that we can have an environment in the city that our current businesses uh, feel appreciated and can thrive, as well as recruiting new businesses. She and I used to always say that um, we would want change, and part of the role in the city is to follow the change that a, a mayor and city council want and to help implement that change. And so Janine and I would always say, we just get ready for the change. For me, this is one change I'm, I'm not looking forward to. We will miss her, and uh, we are out recruiting now for, to fill that position. And the other department director that we will miss is Liz Riley, who's been here uh, as well for 17 years and has been the department director for human resources um, in that entire time, 17 years since we've been here in this building. So it is with mixed emotions that I expressed to you my thanks and also my congratulations to, to them. And we've got a plan also to make sure that we are covered in um, the human resources department. 
That's my report tonight, Al. I'd like to turn it over to you for some updates from the community. Very good. Good evening to you all. Al Bravo, Public Information Officer for the City of Apache Junction. Um, uh, Mayor Wilson, members of the City Council, uh, as uh, Council Member Hecht uh, has noted, yesterday was July 4th, our annual um, uh, Independence Day celebration was held over at Apache Junction High School. It was a smashing success, of course, as, uh, as we have noted before, another wonderful, wonderful event that our Parks Department puts on. Um, special thanks, of course, to uh, Republic Services as the main sponsor for uh, the fireworks show. It was a very, very nice 25-minute uh, fireworks show that we had. The weather held off just long enough for us to make sure we had um, uh, everything uh, under control so everybody could uh, enjoy those fireworks. And uh, that went on um, from about 8.30 to 9 o'clock. And, and like I said, we had a very, very large crowd, um, pretty orderly, no major uh, incidents, according to our police and fire folks. So we got to like that. And, and as always, uh, we want to thank all of our sponsors that make this possible. And there's a number of them there, um, uh, in addition to Republic Services that uh, um, sponsored our fireworks. We also had Arizona Water Company, the Sewer District, the Superstition Fire and Medical District, as well as our Police Department, and of course our hosts, the Apache Junction Unified School District. We were uh, lucky enough to be able to work with them to move um, uh, last night's event uh, to the uh, softball and baseball fields after, of course, the football field became unavailable as they are uh, under renovations there to put in a new track. So uh, we're very, very thankful for, for them as well. So. Um, but job well done for Parks, and, and thanks to everyone. Uh, a couple other announcements that we did want to uh, pass along. Um, there's continuing uh, activity at the uh, Community Garden at Horizon uh, Health and Wellness. There's uh, an, an event coming up this Saturday from 10 to 12. You can see that uh, right up on the screen. Um, they're also always looking for volunteers, um, as uh, Lavier, who uh, um, um, spoke before you, I believe, at the last meeting, um, I talked about there's some more activity going on in the uh, community garden with the master gardeners as well as the events they're trying to plan. Even though it's a little bit warm, uh, this is your chance to get out and uh, get dirty as it were um, at the community garden. So all are welcome to, uh, to head out there and you can see some of that uh, information on the Horizon uh, Health and Wellness website. Um, uh, we should be aware of uh, tomorrow is, uh, or excuse me, should say Thursday, excuse me, is the second of two public meetings on the week's wash detention facility plan. Um, uh, this is um, uh, a, a joint effort between Pinal County and the city and other folks uh, looking at um, uh, different alternatives for the area along week's wash coming into town and going through town. This is the second of two public meetings. It'll be Thursday. Uh, July 7th at 4 o'clock in the afternoon over at the multi-generational center and again all the information on this meeting and the project are on the city's website at apachejunctionaz.gov so make sure you know that too all right um, uh, one more thing and it's a little bit out of yeah. um, uh, out of order here I apologize yeah, yeah. we're not trying to scare you but the mayor can tell you he knows a little bit about this creature this critter um, uh, that was found near his home in uh, East Apache Junction, if you will, um, uh, that um, uh, crawled up under the bench of his neighbor's backyard. Um, it was turned over to our uh, animal control, our animal control officers actually uh, corralled it and uh, got it over to uh, Holdfast uh, Reptiles, which is over on Ironwood, to, to keep for, for safekeeping as we wait for uh, the owners and or folks to come and claim um, uh, it's a big python, um, but it reminds us all that if uh, you have any animal control questions of any sort, or uh, in this case, certainly if you know anything about the wayward python, please call our Paws and Claws Care Center at 480-983-4405. That's up there on the screen, too. Now, uh, we have a little announcement from uh, the uh, police chief because um, all the council members you could probably hold up your your patch, but he's gonna do it the um, uh, old fashioned way up here. Um, uh, but Police uh, Chief Michael Pooley has a new insignia for everyone to look for out in the community. Chief Pooley. Thanks Al. Good evening Mayor, members of Council. Um, uh, one of the things that you're going to see and everyone in the community that will start seeing is starting um, as of July 1st, 
and we'll be transitioning to a new patch for our uh, uniforms. It is going to be a patch that has the Superstition Mountains and it's a little bit different color, but it's uh, something we're very proud of and you'll start seeing this transition by all of our officers over the next two months and come September, everybody will have this new patch. So we'll be doing some more uh, releases on it, but I wanted to make sure that you knew about it and that the community will start seeing that. But we're still the wonderful police department you're used to. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm gonna make a quick comment concerning the, the wonderful visitor that was at my neighbor's house. Uh, <laughs> that's a, a Bernese uh, Python. Um, it was extremely docile. Um, yeah, it was dehydrated and had some uh, vision problems as well as an infection. Um, so they're currently treating it. But uh, we went over uh, to visit it uh, and see it on uh, Saturday. And uh, he now has a girlfriend <laughs> and uh, is doing fairly well. So uh, <clears throat> one of the things I also want to compliment is our uh, park rangers. They're the ones that came out and tried to attempt to get a hold of him first. Uh, unfortunately, all the stuff that he had couldn't corral him at all because he was way too big. And if you saw the picture on the aspect on it, he's a good size. And uh, yeah, I helped carry him and he has a little weight to him, <laughs> even if he is uh, not feeling well. But uh, he's available, and uh, I, I encourage whomever that may have some friends that have a missing pet python to uh, get a hold of uh, animal control and see about getting it back, because he is very friendly. And I, for speaking from an individual, is scared stiff of snakes. <laughs> Your Honor, that concludes my report. Okay, thank you. Your Honor? Yes. I wanted to maybe bring up, because uh, I know it's Pinal County and not the city of Apache Junction, but the career fair that's coming up on July 16th from uh, 10 o'clock to 1 p.m. I know uh, several companies that are gonna be coming down here and we really wanna get the word out for those that are seeking employment that there's gonna be some people here to help them connect up. And we'll make sure to get that on, on, our, on our, um, our homepage as well. Thank you for reminding me of that. Mm -hmm. Okay, <clears throat> public hearings. Items eight and nine are related and in the same subject. And after hearing staff's presentation, I will combine the public hearings. Presentation on resolution number 22-02 related to volume two, the land development code, chapter seven, development fees and presentation on ordinance number 1521, amending the Apache Junction City Code, volume two, land development code. All yes. right, uh, good evening, mayor and city council members. My name is Kelsey Shatnick, I'm a planner on staff, and tonight's presentation is regarding the text amendment for chapter seven development fees. Just as a little reminder on um, the IIP and the development fee report was adopted on May 17, 2022 uh, through resolution number 2201. So the next step in the process is to update the text of volume two, chapter seven of the city code to reflect the information presented within the uh, development fee report. So it's basically just taking that information from the report and putting it into our code. So this is the first of two public hearings on this item. Um, so I'm here tonight and then I'll be back again on August 16, 2022. And that will be at the time um, for possible uh, consideration and adoption. And then if those fees are adopted, they will go into effect on October 31st, 2022. So that kind of concludes my presentation. I know you've kind of been uh, seeing the development fees come up for the past few months, but I'd be happy to help answer any questions. <coughs> Any questions? I've, I've got one. Yeah. Um, as far as the fees go, how, how competitive are these with other cities and towns? Are we in line? Are we more? Are we less? Do we know? Um, that, I'm not sure. Um, 
I don't know if anyone has. We or do you want to? We've got that information. Let's get that up. We did that in the last public hearing, Matt. Let's see if we can find that last presentation. It's competitive. Do you remember where it is in the. Uh... Mr. Mayor, Councilman Schroeder, uh, as usual, Apache Junction is more or less in the middle of the pack, maybe a little bit higher in the pack than in the past. Uh, we're certainly not the highest, we're not the lowest, but we're maybe just a little bit above center in, uh, to our comparative cities. Thank you, Rudy. Rudy, do you know if it's in one of these other presentations from, from the past ones? I believe it's in the big report, the hundred and some pages. <laughs> uh, and I know it was in previous reports um, exactly where it is. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't have that page number. Well, I know I've seen the, the spreadsheet where they compare. We'll, we'll get that. We'll get that right away numbers. to you. Right. But it's, it's in the middle. Or just like Rudy said, just, it's competitive, but not right. Right. Yeah. Rudy answered it. Okay. I mean, is there, maybe a little crazy here, but population-wise, are we, are we at the top end of the scale? So Rudy, I don't know if you want, you want to take that first. Uh, our comparator cities are not necessarily our size. Uh, I think Mesa's in there, I think Gilbert's in there, Chandler's in there. Uh, I think the idea in, in past years and, and with this study as well, has been to place ourselves uh, with those uh, who, with whom we compete. Um, so East Valley cities, um, cities that uh, you know have have development going on similar to us, but not necessarily like per like in, in terms of population size. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't want to yeah, we'll spend time just searching we'll here. Find we'll, we'll find it. Find it and we'll, it's not we'll dire. I'm just yeah. curious. Anyone else have questions? Okay. Continue on. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Oh, that's it. Oh, okay. I will now open public hearing. There is a three-minute time limit with a one-minute warning that you will hear. Please state your name and address for the record. I don't see anybody moving. Okay. Uh, this is not a uh, motion this time. We'll do it on the 15th of uh, August. Old business. We have no old business tonight. New business. Presentation and discussion of Public Works Fiscal Year 2022-2023 Capital Improvements and Street Maintenance Plan. Mr. Shane. And no jokes. <laughs> Please. Again. Take me. No more in me. I'm uh, <laughs> come across as very serious. And uh, so that's an image I need to keep. So thank you. Thank you for that. Um, thank you, Council. Very uh, exciting you know, discussion here talking about Parks and Rec. Colleagues uh, enjoy working with and are proud to be part of with the Padgett Junction working with that, that team. Uh, talked about pythons tonight, but now we're switching gears to roads here tonight. So be, I'm very happy to be here to talk to you about this topic tonight. Um, so we'll, we'll get right into it. Um, Mr. Weaver, Public Works Director here too, will talk towards the end about some new construction, but I'll talk more about the boring maintenance part at the start and at least get prepped and end with some more exciting stuff here at, at the end. Uh, so we'll move right along. And this is a capital maintenance plan uh, for... Uh, New, in, new construction, as I mentioned, as well as maintenance. So this is part of a, I guess you consider of a work plan uh, with Public Works. It's not our full work plan, but it's a significant part. Uh, so it helps us plan, helps us manage, and helps us communicate, essentially, what we're doing for the fiscal year for you. So this is just for presentation, discussion tonight. It's not for any action. So, you know, just sit back and relax and enjoy the show here as we move forward. So the uh, main objective here tonight is to talk about our street in inventory because our streets are our largest assets in the city, our, our largest financial responsibility to, to maintain. A lot of people don't know that. They think of buildings or vehicles, et cetera, and they don't, under don't realize that streets are the largest assets within the city that takes a certain responsibility and forget fiscal responsibility to make sure we manage and upkeep that asset. Uh, so we'll talk about the fiscal year 23 Public Works Capital Improvement Plan, which includes street maintenance. 
and we'll talk about some specific projects and time frames here towards the end, just for your information, for you get to know projects. Well, what you'll see through the fiscal year is those projects will come to you in a form of an agreement with contractors, so we're discussing it here tonight, so there's no surprises to you later on when you see those projects that may come across as usually as a consent during a regular, regular meeting. So this isn't the only time, but just the first time, and you'll see some of those other projects later on when they're awarded and go to con uh, contracts with contractors. Um, also, I wanted to point out the pictures on the, on the right side, that's boot trucks, so I usually try to show some projects from this last year. I was up here last, last year, so I usually want to show pictures of the previous year to show that some of the projects that we do do you know, definitely come to fruition, show you some of the results of those projects. So, so you can see there are applicator truck having to do with a fog seal that we do, did last fall. All right, let's talk about our streets specifically. We, we have our streets measured on a remaining service life. So it's zero to 20. A lot of people think zero to 20 is years. That's not the case. Some streets, depart, depending on parts of the country, could only last as long as 10 years, up to 20 years. If you maintain a street, you could stretch the life of a street out to 40 some years. So you really can't use that as a measure of years. But this is a good illustration of a of a road, this is actually a baseline that we constructed a couple years ago. We have that as a remaining service life of zero. You can see there's no life left to it. It's ready to be reconstructed. Picture on the right is baseline after we reconstructed it and we have it now at an RSL of 20, for example. A new road would be a 20, road without any life is a zero. So knowing that, our goal, our service level goal for the community with our streets is to to maintain the average remaining service life of our total inventory at about 14 or greater. So that's an RSL of 14 or greater for the whole average of the inventory of streets. So our current RSL is 12.31. We went up from last year, which wasn't a surprise because we did a lot of projects that covered a lot of square yardage, and that's the key. The more square yardage you cover on the street, the more you could see that number go up less complaints we get, for example. We found out over the years that if, we, if our RSL goes to around 11, we get complaints. So that's one of our performance indicators there that we try to keep our RSL around 14 or close as, as we can to 14. Uh, then we, we have a feeling that the community are, are liking the roads that we are maintaining out there. Our other key performance indicator is we try to keep roads that are in poor or worse condition, meaning zero RSL, less than 5%. And what that means is, is uh, roads that you have to reconstruct cost usually 10 times more than a road that you have to maintain. Also, as we're experiencing out, out uh, on Idaho right now, we're reconstructing it. It has a huge impact on the community. It has a impact for just convenience, impact on our commerce, impact. So we try not to reconstruct streets as often as possible. We try to extend the life of the streets out that 40, 50 years so we don't have to reconstruct the street. So when you start seeing that number of roads that are more than 5%, then we're getting in trouble because we are taking a lot of money just to restore a small amount of roads and having a significant impact to the community. So the bit of the bad news in this presentation is our current uh, percent of street and poor worse condition, uh, condition is 9.5%. 5, 9 and that has gone up <coughs> about a percent and a half for the last three or four years. Next year, we're gonna be putting more money towards reconstruction, more money through the rehab to lessen that number. But what that's gonna do is that top number of 12.31 is gonna be coming down because we are hitting less square yardage. And some of you may ask why, and the reason why is that last bullet point, essentially to maintain our current inventory, it's estimated at about $2.2 million. And currently we spend about 1.6 million on, on our streets. And that is money that we get a little bit from HERF but a big part of that is our street sales tax. And I can't emphasize enough how important that sales tax is. I think it's gonna be sus sunsetting in a couple of years. Um, and that would be great because that is what maintains our streets, that sales tax. 
So the picture on the right, slurry seal of, of a couple different projects. We did like three or four subdivisions this last spring, so we had a real busy year with a lot of slurry seal. So I appreciate the public's patience, your patience with all the maintenance that we've been doing, but oftentimes when you see maintenance, that's actually a me measure of good success of keeping our roads uh, in good condition. This map I gave um, to you on your bench here tonight. So the main purpose uh, with this map is to show you that illustration of all that color. That color is a good thing. That means we're, we're hitting a lot, of, a lot of square yardage. These are projects that, that we'll be hitting in this next fiscal year and we'll talk a little bit more specifically of these projects. So I have this map for you. It's a little bit easier to read. My, my disclaimer is, is, again, this is a plan. There's a lot of things that influence a plan. So I just, just remind you to be careful if you're talking about certain projects being done. Yes, this is the plan. We're trying to attempt to get those projects done, but sometimes some projects get deferred, kicked down, down the road uh, to next year due to unforeseen uh, things related to budgets or other unforeseen things with construction. So. All right, we'll talk a little bit more specific on projects. So when you talk about street maintenance, it's often bro breaks, broken down into preservation maintenance or routine maintenance. Crack seal is more of a routine maintenance, but I just put it under preservation maintenance because we do a lot of crack seal. We do a lot of crack seal with contractors, and also we do have a melter in-house, so you'll see a lot of our public works out there doing crack sealing as well. It's one of the most basic the more money you could put in the crack seal, the better. That really holds the roads together because as soon as you get those cracks that open up to the rain, all of a sudden the rain, moisture in the sun is our, our biggest thing that deteriorates our roads. So crack sealing is one of the best things we could do and we try to do as much of that as we can. In Arizona, a little bit different than in uh, Minnesota. In Minnesota, ice is one of the biggest threats. Not enough sun, but in Arizona we have a lot of sun. So you'll see a lot more fog sealing down in Arizona than you would up in, in, the, in, the, in out east or in the Midwest. So we try to do a lot of fog seal too because we do have a lot of sun and that actually keeps the pavement from deteriorating from the top down essentially and actually puts a new riding surface onto pavement. Um, I think Mr. Bravo calls it black paint. So when you see a news release go out there about black paint, painting the street, that's essentially a fog seal that looks like a paint but it's necessary to keep a road. Uh, life being extended and keeping it sealed against the sun and the rain. Uh, another tool in the toolbox we oftentimes use is the slurry seal. Um, so we do have portions of Delaware and Southern Avenue this next fiscal year that are due up for some slurry seal. And we do have a Superstition Villa, a Superstition Estate subdivision there, which is just west of Idaho, north of Southern, a large older subdivision that also is up for a slurry seal this year. Uh, a couple years ago, we started uh, using crushed asphalt as an aggregate in our slurry seal. We're hoping to continue that. Also, this last year when we did some chip sealing this spring, we used our crushed aggregate for, for our chip seal this last year. So that, I just say that as an example of our efforts when it comes to sustainability, um, life to grave type of uh, scenario with the products that we use uh, for a lot of our projects or we're trying to do with a lot of our projects with, with public works. And then of course we do have a lot of chip sealing too this next spring and that's again another project too a lot of our in-house for, in forces do and you'll see a lot of the chip seals being done to our rural roads out on the fringes of the city um, just because it's a little bit mess messier. You don't want to be putting a chip seal on curb gutter sidewalk because those chips or the rock get all, um, gets all over the place. So that's why you'll see that treatment um, out in the rural, rural road areas. A rehabilit a rehabilitation, so this is a, what you call a repaving, a thin overlay. So we'll be hitting a lot more square yards with overlays this year as I mentioned that 9.5% of roads that are very poor. Um, we're having to try to knock that number down. Um, so doing that is gonna be doing a lot more overlays in some residential areas as well as some portions of our arterials. You can see Idaho Road right now is currently being portions under reconstruction, but in a few days we'll be actually doing a portion from Superstition Boulevard down to North Apache Trail. About that quarter mile there, pavement's in bad shape. Uh, we need to get over a lay on there before we continue to lose that uh, pavement. Um, 
Also, we have uh, some residential areas in the city. A lot of residential areas were built in the late 90s, early 2000s. We're sitting at 2022, so we have a lot of pavement out there that's aging at the same time. And that's one of the reasons why that 9.5% is why it's at, is we have a large inventory that's sort of aging at the last time. I've done as many slurry seals, as many fog seals, everything that we can. It's just a natural life of a pavement does get to the point of being an overlay or reconstruction. So our challenge in the next few years will be trying to keep ahead of that wave of the overlays and reconstruction that we need, need, to, need to do. Uh, so you can see with the residential overlays, some of those specific um, areas there on your map there too, I'll let you sort of correlate those areas on your map uh, there and the overlays I believe are in the, in the blue color, I believe. So when you look at the map, overlays are in that darker, darker blue color. And then we have Not reconstruction much. projects. Um, currently, Idaho, we just talked about, and we're having an overlay, um, also part of Idaho here coming up very soon. And we have the next phases of Lost Dutchman. We started the first phase, uh, I think a year ago, from um, State Route 88 over to Tomahawk. The second and third phase will, will be taking Tomahawk all the way to Ironwood. And there'll be reconstruction as well as addition of bike lanes, continuing the bike lanes all the way from 88, to hopefully all the way to Meridian in the next, in that phase four. Um, and then we have portions of Valley Drive, a rural road up in the north part of the city that we're looking to reconstruct. And then Haven Hollow area, which is that area west of uh, um, Delaware, south of Superstition Boulevard and north of Apache Trail some of the roads that haven't been hit in a long, long time. So we're ready to deal with some drainage and get those roads paved over there this next year. And I think I'm gonna jump over to Mike and then of course I'll be available for any questions too here at the end, but Mike will talk to us on some more exciting new, new construction projects and then some of the larger designs too that we have planned for the fiscal year. Mayor, Council, Mike Weaver, Public Works Director. First project on the list is Old West Highways. Um, project we looked at to try to get sidewalks from Idaho out to Goldfield. Applied for a grant, got the money, started the project. I think it started at two million. It, and I think right now it's about 5.3. So obviously we're a little worried about that. Raquel went in for closeout, got closeout money. As we got closer, it went higher, but went from like 4.5 to 5.3. She went back and got closed out again. Luckily, they had a second round of that, and we, I believe, are getting about $5 million for that, so we will move on with it. But that will basically sidewalk. Most of the time, it will be curbside. There will be some, you know, 30% of it that's out in the ditch, basically meandering, and where it's curbside then uh, obviously we'll put curb in. Idaho road improvements, the, <clears throat> this would be from Superstition to McKelps, but the majority of it is Superstition to Lost Dutchman. The plan was to come in, have them put curb and gutter in and the missing spots, put sidewalk in and then we would come back and reconstruct the, the center portion. The project got delayed because of right away, so we decided the road couldn't wait any longer talked to Shane. Shane really wanted to get it done while school was out, so we're going to attack it now and then come in later and do the ADOT project. And that one is about $1.5 million, and we get $1.35 in grant. Apache Trail Median will continue heading west. We'll do this project this year, and then I believe we have one more. So just putting curb at the median and then uh, doing some landscaping been a great partnership with Park and Rec, and uh, when we're done, we'll be glad it's over with, so. <laughs> Virginia Scenic Pinion. So, this is, we started doing these CDBG and other projects in that area. They, that area fell out of the, the bracket that got us the money, so we pulled out and went to a different area, so. We need to go get that area finished, and we'll do that this year. Hey, Mike. 
Yes. That wouldn't happen to be the 2400 block of Virginia. That's it, two, yeah. four, 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 four. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, You guys are aware of that. Right? No, oh, yes, I didn't know that. That's part of the plan. Yes. Someone's um, beating you to it on the curb. Just want to let you know something there. <laughs> yes, that's true. Um, it's always been in the plan. <laughs> yeah, it's been it's a project we wanted to get at, and uh, it it had to wait its turn, but it's finally here. Um, Broadway storm drain. Hallelujah. So he's not here. Yeah. He's not here, so he can't yeah, be out there dancing. I know the one night he's not here. Actually, yes. um, <laughs> so we'll be doing a project on Delaware, but this on Broadway, um, if you know where Grand Avenue and Acatillo are at, just west of Grand, there's a dual 54-inch pipe in there they put in for drainage. I'd have to guess 10 years ago, I don't know. And we're gonna extend that to Ocotillo. Both, both barrels will uh, cap it at that point, but we'll stub north on Ocotillo in a future project and we'll stub north on Grand. Basically on Grand we'll come up a couple hundred feet, put some inlets in and get that to drain. But Ocotillo will run it completely north later to uh, First Avenue and right behind there's an auto zone there, and there's a little drainage, concrete drainage channel that spills out in the road and then kind of heads out underneath the garage and back in and goes all over the place. So we want to get the pipe up, stub into that channel, and pick that water up at that point. So that the first phase of that project is get the Broadway storm drain extended to those streets and get them stubbed in. Also, Broadway is in tough shape, so that allows Shane to come in and get his work done after that. Got that look, Mr. Schroeder? No, no look. <laughs> <laughs> Doing a fantastic job. Storm, storm water detention. Um, we're, the county's leading this. It's in, the, it's in their budget for this year. I haven't seen the IGA yet, but they assure me we're going this year. So this is the one by the roundabout. Um, be a great project for, as it works its way down to Palm Wash, but it'll be a helpful project. We're also working on a regional detention thing, trying to find a good solution to that, but it's uh, such a large project. We have a few options we're looking at, but they're big. So we're trying to find out if it's feasible to do this or not. So anyway, Winchester storm drain extension. Also, we're gonna, from Southern to 29th, we'll take that road, right now it's, mainly two lane with curb and gutter. We'll add sidewalk, we'll add bike lanes, and there's a ditch on the east side of that road. We will kind of do the same thing we're gonna do with Delaware. We'll put pipe in the ditch and then cover that up until you get down to the storage rental area where there's a concrete channel. We'll likely leave that as it is, but basically get the water moving and then that allows us when we did the Winchester project north of Southern, we couldn't hook it up to the existing storm drain because the ditch didn't handle the water that we were putting into it. So ADOT had some bad experiences in the past, so they wouldn't allow us to actually hook up the storm drain at that point. So we've got to get this project done in order to tie into that one. So when we get all done, it'll be complete. Oh, uh, let's see. I don't know if there's any more or not. Oh, designs. Okay, so we are we are working on the, the Delaware Drive improvements, and that's Broadway to 16th. Same thing we're talking about. It's got that very steep ditch. I want to get rid of that, get some pipe in. And that'll have curb and gutter as well on the west side. It'll have sidewalks on that side and some lighting and bike paths. So it'll match what's uh, south. And I already talked about weak swash regional detention, but that is a, the guys we're working with, um, super smart. So if there's a way to do it, they'll figure it out. But right now it's a very difficult project. And if you have any questions, I would be glad to answer them. Any questions? I got more Your Honor, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Peter. Um, this question for either of you. Um, um, Shane, you had mentioned uh, creating bike lanes. When you do that, on a, when you're creating a new one, are you extending the roadway into the shoulder to create that bike lane? 
Yes, essentially we are. In some cases too, we do have to look at right away because oftentimes you're restricted on the width of the road with right away. We usually try to maintain, if we do not have any curb gutter, a certain width of dirt shoulder too to maintain, keep it accessible for you know uh, horses, etc. Um, so correct. Yep. Yes. I was just going to thank you guys. I mean, I love these presentations. I do get people asking me, "What about this road? What about that road?" I'll have a little something to go off of now. Thanks a lot. Yeah. And it's, we do try to get the money to the maintenance side that when we're getting the Mike the grant. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> Thanks. When we're getting the grants, so we can't pass the projects up, so we do figure out a way to Super. get that match money. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to make a final note too that ever since Mike's here for the last five years, we've gotten a lot more done with drainage than we have in the previous ten. Yeah. So we're in that monsoon time right now that you know drainage is very important, and I I love what's happening with this drainage stuff that's happening, especially with weeks wash. That's going to be huge, be huge for the city. But thank you so much for tonight. And again, <clears throat> we don't have motions on them, so we don't need just as just for general information. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, council direction to staff: we don't have anything. Uh, selection of meeting dates, times, no, locations. No. Hmm? Mary, we skipped one item: the Not traffic really signal either. repair service. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. I got in a hurry. I guess. <laughs> Presentation discussion regarding an agreement with uh, Roadway Electric LLC for traffic signal repair services. That's right. I forgot that one. I was in a hurry too. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Not let me forget. Shane Keith, the Public Works Manager. So just quickly, traffic signals repair services. Uh, this is for a very critical facility, and that is our traffic signals. Our traffic signals, as our traffic volumes increase, our population increases, uh, the traffic signals become just even that much of a critical um, asset that we have. The last couple of years, we've had a lot of collisions. I think we went 10 years, I didn't have any collision. Just in the last couple of years, we've had collisions in traffic signals and the traffic signal cabinets, et cetera, and they could be very expensive, very hard to get the signals back up and running again. And what this does is this contracts help us get those needed pieces in place so we could respond to um, such things that happen. Um, so it is a roadway electric. We did used to have a contract with them through the Mesa contract. They went out and bid again, set another contract. They awarded it again to roadway electric. So we're just looking to, again, re-put re our contract in place so we could uh, reap the benefits of that contract and have that access to that contractor. That is it. If there's any questions. You're on. Yes. Is this strictly repair or is this got, got replace involved in some of this too, if need be? All of the above. Sometimes we've had issues with repair that's beyond the technical capabilities where we have to bring contractor in most of the time and the, the security of this contract is for those unplanned uh, repairs, collisions that I just talked about or wind events too. Wind events could actually do that. Uh, high profile vehicles knocking the heads off of the signals. We've all seen that. Mm -hmm. uh, that happens uh, quite often. Runner? Yes. Um, change uh, in terms of the maintenance, does that include preventive maintenance or is it just waiting until a street light or a, or a overhead light just goes, stops working? Good question. It's not a maintenance contract. It is mainly just as needed for any specific repairs or re support that we might get in trouble with our technical staff. Thank okay. you. Anyone else? Thank you. Thank you. All right. Now, if council direction and staff don't have anything, selection of meeting dates and times and locations, do I have a motion for upcoming council dates? Your Honor, I move that an executive session at 6 p.m. for Monday, July 18th and Tuesday, July 19th, 2022, be held in the City Council Conference Room located at 300 East Superstition Boulevard, Apache Junction, Arizona, and other meetings be scheduled if necessary. Second. <coughs> Moved and seconded. Roll call. Council Member Nesser? Yes. Council Member Johnson? Yes. Council Member Evans? Yes. Council Member Heck? Yes. Council Member Schroeder? Yes. Mayor Wilson? Yes. Motion passes. Okay. Call to the public. Do we have any? 
don't don't have any, so I'm not going to read it. No, we don't have any. <laughs> so we don't have any call to the public. So uh, <clears throat> I don't need a response. So I will adjourn this meeting. Thank you. It's not our vote.